Hi everybody, I'm Sander and I believe in technology. Many say that there is no need to reinvent the wheel. Well, I'm passionately following the people who do just that. James Dyson with his company has been doing that since 1974. This time they're trying to reinvent the hairdryer. Let's take a closer look. Dyson is not new to the world of completely rethinking technologies that seem final to many people. Think about the 1970s where he reinvented the wheelbarrow using a ball, calling it a ball barrow, and that can be used on many other surfaces rather than the traditional wheelbarrow. After that, something that many people use in their homes is also the vacuum cleaner that he reinvented using a cyclone technology, meaning that it's not using any replaceable bag, so it remains as powerful and efficient from the day you bought it. Another well-known invention from Dyson E are the bladeless fans, which are using an air multiplier technology to make them more quiet and more efficient. And the most recent invention from Dyson are the hand dryers that you can see in many public places where you just slide your hands in and out a few times and they're completely dry. This time Dyson is trying to change the air dryer industry. There are four problems that they're trying to solve with the supersonic hair dryer. First of all, the existing solutions are bulky and heavy and unbalanced. Secondly, they burn your hair because they go at really high temperatures. Thirdly, they're really loud. And fourthly, they take long time to dry their hair. And also the existing hair dryers haven't changed from 1960s. And it took Tyson about a four year of research and development before they brought out the supersonic hair dryer. Let's unbox the Dyson supersonic hair dryer Take a look at the hardware and then also do a real life test against the conventional hair dryer with my short hair and also with my partner's long hair. The Dyson Supersonic hair dryer comes in a fairly plain box of just white and the hair dryer itself on the front. On the back they're definitely trying to impress you with all the technology and engineering that has gone into making the hair dryer. So let's take a look at what's inside. First of all they have the diffuser, then there's more nozzles here so I guess that's the smoothing nozzle and that's the styling nozzle that it comes with then there's a heat map here which I guess you can just slide out and you can put your hairdryer on it and then there's the hairdryer itself looking at the hardware when you take the supersonic hairdryer in your hand you can definitely feel that it's made from high quality plastic on the hairdryer itself there are not that many buttons first of all you have the on and off power button just below that you have a cool button and on top of it you have two buttons, one to change the fan speed and the other one to change the temperature. The hairdryer itself has got a built-in motor into the handle to allow better balance rather than be top heavy. It has a tiny motor of just 27 millimeters in diameter in the handle that is turning 13 liters of air per second which is about six times faster than any conventional hairdryer because it's using an air multiplier technology. You can attach the nozzles using the magnetic technology which will keep them really well. You have a styling nozzle, smoothing nozzle and also a diffuser that you can change very easily. The hardware itself also has a built-in heat control that should eliminate your hair damage and it ultimately should be more quiet than a conventional hair dryer. But it's hard to say if any of that is true without the real life test. So in this test we're going to do two things. Both of us, myself and my partner, will be drying their hair with a Dyson supersonic hair dryer and also with a conventional hair dryer which also higher end from GHD that is about 100 pounds in cost and Dyson itself costs about 300 pounds. And after this we'll see whether it's actually faster, is it more quiet, does it not burn your hair and is it actually more comfortable to hold. So let's take a look at the test. What did we learn from the test or how well Dyson is delivering on those four promises they're making against the conventional hairdryer, the industry that is more than 70 years old and they're trying to change? First of all, let's talk about time. Dyson says that it takes less time to dry your hair with Dyson than with conventional hairdryer. In our test that is definitely not scientific and just well, from our own opinion, it took about 20 to 25% less time. 
which is about instead of five minutes it will take you four minutes. I don't think that's enough to justify the price difference of 300 pounds versus 100 pounds. The second thing that Dyson promises is comfort and we definitely both agree that Dyson putting their engine or the motor into the handle definitely feels it more solid and balanced in hand than the top heavy. It also, because of the size, it's much easier to get into your hair. Besides Dyson being smaller, it's much easier to take that with you when you go to travels. The big one would never get in unless you buy the specific travel ones. Thirdly, what Dyson promises is noise, that it's going to be less noisy than a conventional hair dryer. We didn't find them, neither of them, too noisy, but they're just different pitch where Dyson is really high pitch, then the conventional hair dryer is much lower pitch. And you can hear the difference. You can have an easier conversation over Dyson than a conventional, but again, that's not that much of a difference. Fourth area, which is the most important area, is the promise that they're not going to damage your hair and they're going to be comfortable using while you're drying your hair. We both found the conventional one really burning your head and you can feel it from your skin after you've dried your hair that have actually really irritated your skin. And neither of us had that feeling while using the Dyson hair dryer. By the way, both running at full steam and the full temperature that comes out of these hair dryers. Also, the nozzle gets really hot on the conventional hair dryer and when it touches your face or any part of your skin, then it really burns and that wasn't the case with Dyson hair dryer. In addition to the burning, my girlfriend also said that the Dyson hair dryer left her hair much more smoother rather than leaving them in those bulks than the conventional hair dryer, which is something that I didn't feel because I have short hair, but something that you should consider for your long hair. Overall, Dyson has delivered on all the four promises they made, in some areas exceeding more than we actually thought. It's not going to save you so much time, it's not going to be super quiet for sure, but it's definitely going to be more comfortable in hand and it's not going to damage your hair as much, which I think is the biggest promise that Dyson is making and also delivering on. Can you justify a £300 price or a $400 price over a more conventional, a high-end one, for example, that you can get from £50 to £100, which is about $150 to $200? We think you can, depends how often you use it, because if you cost it down per cost per use, then ultimately the longer you can use it, let's say if Dyson would last us five or more years, then there's going to be ultimately almost no cost difference. So we're going to use Dyson and not going to use the conventional hairdryer anymore. Go out, test them in order to understand the difference and the value and whether you can justify the £300 price point. Thank you very much for watching this video on Dyson supersonic hairdryer in comparison with a conventional hairdryer. Please answer a question here on your right by clicking on that I button whether you think you would justify the £300 uh, price point for Dyson hairdryer and you would consider getting one. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.